Hi everyone, um, Tim Kulu here. Uh, I should apologize, uh, it's possible that the audio may not be that great here. So, anyway, um, an African American pastor, David Manning of the Edla Church, uh, A T L A H, in Harlem, in New York, USA, has been consistently attacking Mr. Obama and his family. The fiery and uninhibited Pastor Manning has shown no iota of respect to the family of Mr. Obama. He refers to Mr. Obama as trash and uses other forms of vulgar, racist, sexist language to insult the mother of Mr. Obama and the family. Pastor Manning tells himself as a man of integrity and honor and truth. He says he has the word of God in his mouth. His racist, sexist, abusive tirade has been directed against his own African-American church audience, um, the kind-hearted people of Harlem, uh, the African-American leaders, and particularly the front-runner uh, of the Democratic Party, uh, the presidential hopeful, uh, the Honorable Senator, uh, Mr. Barack Obama. Attacking somebody's family and insulting his mother is the most despicable thing. This is a technique used by gangsters and other criminals who attack and gun down uh, the guy they disagree with as well as uh, his family. There is neither honor nor integrity in insulting a woman of any kind, whether she is black or white. For this reason, uh, the honor and integrity of Pastor Manning of the Edla Church in Harlem is fallacy. Pastor Manning subjects his own flock to some painfully extreme uh, preaching that uh, lambasts, uh, peels away self-esteem, puts down his own people of African descent, he uses racist, uh, sexist, and vulgar language to put down African Americans and their leaders as well as black mothers. He wonders why uh, black mothers allow the children to, to rap. Uh, Pastor Manning is hard on the victim of racial oppression when he blames the black mother. He attributes uh, blame and the fault to the black mothers. Pastor Manning subjects his own flock to some painfully extreme preaching that lambasts, peels away self-esteem, puts down his own people of African descent. He uses racist, sexist, and vulgar language to put down African Americans and their leaders as well as black mothers. He wonders why black mothers allow their children to rap. Pastor Manning is hard on the victim of racial oppression when he blames the black mother. He attributes blame and, and fault to the black mothers that we have rap music today. This part is quite interesting because rap music is the only artistic invention from the black neighborhoods that uh, connects the economically disenfranchised black artist with the audience directly. And the message is not censored or filtered uh, in any way. All other forms of music are filtered. This makes rap music the most powerful anti-establishment tool in the hands of African Americans in terms of making a political statement against the establishment that continues to economically disenfranchise people of African descent and chastise those that agitate for change in the struggle for a better life. I have looked a little more into the sexist, racist, abusive tirades of uh, Pastor Manning against his own people and wondered as to who stands to gain from his views? I must confess it was very painful to subject myself to his abusive tirades. He speaks very well of uh, Mr. McCain and in fact he advises and encourages his church members and the people of Harlem to vote for Mr. McCain. Now Mr. McCain is the uh, front runner, actually he is the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party and uh, he will be facing against uh, another presumptive nominee, Mr. Obama, in the November elections. Mr. Obama belongs to the Democratic Party, whereas Mr. McCain belongs to the Republican Party. The Republican Party is the same party of uh, uh, the current president, Mr. George Bush. Now, Pastor Manning speaks very well of Mr. George Bush, and he also speaks well of the Clintons. Uh, Pastor David Manning has been featured in the conservative media. I mean, the, uh, we're talking here powerful... Uh, conservative media outlets uh, by the most powerful right-wing broadcasters like uh, John Gibson of the Fox News and Rush Limbaugh of the Rush Limbaugh Show. I, I should just point out here that uh, 
Rush Limbaugh is a very powerful guy, well connected. Um, uh, his uncle is a, is a judge, is a Supreme Court judge, and his cousin is a Supreme Court judge uh, in Missouri State. And uh, back in 1992, when Clinton was running against George Bush, uh, he mounted uh, a very impressive uh, challenge against uh, Clinton. Uh, he obviously did a very good job because even though uh, Clinton defeated uh, George Bush, uh, the former president of the USA, Mr. Ronald Reagan, wrote a letter you know, congratulating and thanking uh, Mr. Rush Limbaugh for mounting a very impressive uh, campaign in the advancement of the Republican Party and the principles of the conservative establishment. Now, of course, the question is, what is in it for Mr. For Pastor Manning? You live in a, a capital society where people are motivated by financial gain. So the question is, what is it that motivates Pastor Manning, or at least uh, what does he gain, or is there any gain or financial material gain associated with his uh, overzealous activities. And actually you'll find that, yeah, there is some kind of a material gain here, because in a video, Obama's Bra 54 Double D, that was published on YouTube on February 19th, 2008, Pastor Manning makes mention of the gift of $250 million, or about a quarter billion dollars, uh, given to his community in Harlem by the Clintons. He lambasts his people for being dishonorable when they throw their support behind Mr. Obama. It is implicit from Pastor Manning that the money from the Clintons was supposed to buy the loyalty of his community. And now that they support Obama, they have become dishonorable and have no integrity. And he pulls no punches in attacking his community for switching allegiance away from uh, the Clintons. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about reverse psychology of racist attacks. The fact that Pastor Manning uses a racist and sexist language to put down his own African-American people points to a black art of reverse psychology. It seems the logic is that if you are a black guy and you use a racist language against your own people, then nobody can stop you. Uh, you know, you can break the rules that are currently prohibitive against such a language, you can do this with impunity. That is because, according to this logic, the automatic mechanisms of reaction against racial oppression are geared towards the white folks and not the black folks, because historically it is the white folks that have used racism and sexism to put down the black folks and the black women. Now, this approach of a black guy carrying out the same functions of a white racist is a novelty which the black folks don't quite know how to respond to it. It will take them some time to formulate an effective uh, counter-strike. However, it is not a new strategy. All that the African Americans have to do is take a page from the South African struggle for emancipation. It was used in South Africa by the architects of apartheid in inciting what they referred to as black on black violence. In the case of South Africa, they recruited the black police to suppress dissent by the racially oppressed black majority. The black South Africans were able to break this logjam primarily because they had a high caliber of leaders like Mr. Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Mr. Mefimarobe, um, uh, Winnie Mandela, and many, many others. In fact, Mr. Mefimarov was a publicity secretary of the United Democratic Front, and his job was to formulate effective responses against the apartheid propaganda machine, and he was very effective at that. So, um, unfortunately, uh, the African Americans uh, do not have such a mechanism, or may not have such a mechanism, and I think it will be interesting for them to look at how South Africa dealt with this reverse psychology of racism, where, you know, somebody uh, who, somebody uh, of African descent is co-opted by, by the conservative establishment to actually drive a wedge uh, in their struggle, uh, you know, for a better life. Uh, so anyways, um, this is basically I, uh, something that I wanted to just share with you about uh, my observations of uh, Pastor David Manning.